Hi, this is Dr. Cairns with a brief lecture for High Performance People Management Week 3. Let's first of all review our roadmap, where we're going, how we're going to get there. Our objectives are to engage in critical thinking, observe human behavior, and apply the principles, tools, and techniques and methods that we learn. It's my desire this course results in a positive life-changing experience for you. We've designed the course with that in mind. Whether you need something personally, professionally, or spiritually, we're making daily mention of you in our prayers. Let's look at faith and people management. People management and faith. Implied here is they both intersect. And we look at how we go to work, what's our faith and work, and how do they relate to each other. Putting those pieces of the puzzle together so that we are complete whole human beings serving God in the workplace and we're using the Christian atheist to help us uh, generate uh, that understanding. This week's reading of the Christian atheist there's a discussion about unconditional love and uh, that's something that uh, followers of Christ wrestle with uh, a lot is not only the ability to accept unconditional love from God but then to pass that on uh, to others so I thought I would uh, look at that and examine it briefly uh, using Maslow's need hierarchy theory uh, from the standpoint of uh, are we capable of unconditional love and if so where do we start and what does it look like and so here you have the need hierarchy uh, which according to Maslow a person would uh, progress from satisfying the physiological needs food water shelter uh, then move into safety and security and then uh, belonging uh, and social activity and so on until you reach the pinnacle. Uh, however, it, it suggests that uh, you move along this spectrum uh, somewhat linear fashion, but in reality uh, today uh, you can actually uh, leapfrog over over some of these areas and some be maybe less important uh, and others more important and therefore you gravitate to that first uh, and meeting that need. And, and the aspect of unconditional love we could look at uh, two aspects of the of the hierarchy theory according to Maslow and find perhaps uh, uh, one of our core motivations of uh, ourselves for uh, esteem and status and a need for belonging and social activity and we find that uh, through our relationships at work the people we work for and whether or not we're able to advance in our careers and be recognized and what kind of status do we achieve that's how the world would define satisfying this need. Uh, but we realize that there's more than that. So uh, what would be the definition of how God would look at it? And we find that in Luke chapter 10, verse 27, where Jesus uh, is asked, what's the greatest commandment? And he says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. So that's important for us to understand. But it starts with yourself. So let's go uh, examine that a little bit deeper in terms of esteem and status. What in the world does that really mean? It, it means having a positive self-image of ourselves and also respecting ourselves. And then there's a, a part of being respected by others. And again, that's recognized through advancement, recognition, and status as the world would see it. But we need to caution ourselves in regards to that because that's really how the world would define it. Uh, but uh, it, we know as a follower of Christ in a Christian worldview, that would get defined somewhat differently. So what I'd like you to do is take a little exercise, uh, a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle uh, vertically, and on the right-hand side and the upper right-hand side, write strengths, and on the upper left-hand side, write weaknesses. And then I'd, I'd like you to identify and list uh, 10 of each uh, one. And you'll probably have no problem rattling off your strengths, but the weaknesses may give you a little bit of pause. But I say, you know, work at that. Be honest with yourself. No one else is looking at this, just yourself uh, as well. So acknowledge your strengths and your weaknesses. And later on in the course, we're going to look at your strengths according to strength finders. So what's some aspect that I could do to put some things in perspective to have a positive self-image, have self-respect, and be respected by others, but also not placing just so much emphasis on my own uh, status and advancement. So I need to set realistic expectations for myself, set aside this notion of achieving perfection, be really aware of my behaviors and my actions on others, stop comparing myself to others, 
and then accept my accomplishments, but also accept my mistakes. Okay, this week in week two of uh, Rango, section A, I asked the question, do you think Rango is a type A or type B personality? And essentially, uh, the definitions, uh, for lack of something maybe more in-depth, is A, the type A personality is the world won't spin unless I push it. And the type B personality would be if the world stops spinning, let me know. And so whether or not you felt uh, Rango was an A or a B, the essential thing to note from there is that both types are effective. And so the extreme type A individual, very competitive, uh, the B a little bit more laid back. However, and we've heard the expression, you lead from behind or lead from the front. Uh, essentially, you can be a type A personality and lead from the back. Uh, you could be a type B and really lead from the front. Uh, so essentially, it's sort of look at this uh, aspect and what we come away from is really what is the type personality that you want to have to be most effective. And so it may mean modifying and adjusting our personalities from time to time and our uh, type A and type B. So which personality type is more effective? Well, you decide. I say it's the situation that will determine it. And then secondly, which personality type is more prone to coronary disease? Well, that's the one you want to avoid. Continuing on that theme of drive, we see how organization stressors play and affect our core job dimensions. And you may think that a type A personality uh, may be able to just uh, steamroller those uh, organizational stressors. And perhaps the type A personality creates more stress than they actually resolve. Or the type B uh, may be able to, to deal with uh, stress a little better and certainly uh, the type B probably has a little more control of uh, stressors as it relates to the job. But it's important to see how uh, these things uh, set our hair on fire and, and it's important for us to learn ways to manage those. And so we have various coping mechanisms available to us. Uh, exercise, finding time to relax, read a book, go to the beach, see a movie, uh, play different roles, have support groups, uh, and then in the center there is time management, which is the most important aspect uh, that we, we need to really focus on our better ways to manage our time. And we may think that we have less control of our time than we actually do. Uh, and perhaps that's because we commit to more things than uh, we possibly should, uh, or we don't say no, uh, or we uh, just want to take on more things. Now I say that knowing that most of you are working and going to school and so you're saying well how can a professor say and lay all these things on me when I've got to juggle school well you chose to go to school which is a good thing by the way uh, and you may think well once that's over I'll recoup my time no now is the time to really manage exactly everything you put into it because once that time uh, goes it's filled with something else and you want to be thoughtful and purposeful uh, when filling those things Next, I just want to look briefly again at the interaction of faith and organization theory and practices. And I talked about this uh, continuing process of us looking at uh, these theories and tools and practices that we're studying. How can we use those to uh, have better relationships, have uh, a sense of purpose and meaning in the jobs that we have, and a life of integrity? And how does scripture relate to those? And how can these things help us actually serve God better at work. And so this week I want to pull out one that actually hits all three uh, areas. One helps us sustainable relationships, uh, helps us with a meaningful career and a life of integrity and that's found with the goal setting theory of motivation. And uh, focused here is goal directed effort and performance. Setting goals that are difficult, setting goals that are specific, and you've probably heard this before, is also praying specific prayers accepting the things that we have and committing to those and out of those we will receive our intrinsic rewards and extrinsic rewards and ultimately satisfaction and so we find in first first corinthians 9 24 where paul writes do you not know that those who run the race run all everybody runs the race so we could say we're all in that rat race together but only one receives the prize and so you should run in such a way that you're going to obtain it 
And you're doing that aspect, obviously, with your uh, increasing your education, your skill experience, and all those areas. Uh, those are things that we can work on to be more skilled in what we do. And there's nothing wrong with running a race to obtain it. And how do we want to do it? Well, we want to do it in a way where we commit our way to the Lord and trust in Him, and He's going to act on our behalf. And so the satisfaction that I ultimately want to have is one that is pleasing uh, to God. This week your classic theory paper is due and this will be the rubric that I will use for the grading looking at how you summarize the article or theory that you've chosen and then how you describe the significance uh, to today's uh, organization behavior uh, and then explain the impact on business and then how you integrate faith uh, with that theory and then an annotated bibliography. Uh, basically the summary is where I find a lot of times students spend uh, more effort there. Uh, however, that's the one where I want you to be as uh, succinct and brief as you possibly can in describing the theory because, or, or summarizing it because I want you to spend more time describing its significance. That's where your critical thinking and your application uh, will come in. That shows me how well you understand uh, the theory. So. If you had to err on the side of where do you spend more time, spend more time thinking about the impact that it has on today and then explaining that to me. And then week four, uh, you will have a presentation uh, on your paper uh, to your classmates and you can, uh, you, it's optional how you put that together. This uh, template is provided as an example of the areas to cover uh, and you could use this template if you choose uh, or use some other fashion. Uh, three to five minutes explaining your paper. Uh, again, these are the concepts uh, that you need to cover. Then lastly, our, uh, what's happening this week, we continue to daily make mention of you in our prayers that God would amaze you in something that you need and breakthrough in your life. Also, we finish Rango this week, the conclusion. It's sad to see it come to an end. Make sure you read chapters 6 through 11. Also, submit your organization diagnosis proposal, who's going to be in your group, and then your classic theory paper. And then looking ahead to week four, you'll have uh, chapters six through 11. The quiz need to be completed by the end of that week. And then also your classic theory paper. And then you see week seven uh, coming up upon us quickly. The virtual classroom never sleeps. Remember, I have virtual office hours every Tuesday. No appointment necessary. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you in the virtual classroom. If you have any questions or concerns about anything, please let me know.